Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to our program, Inspirate. We have said this many a time. Our objective in having these programs is to engage you. You and I are aware of some of the challenge, challenges rather, that we face ourselves on a daily basis. But there are solutions. And again, none of us here sitting have the monopoly of knowledge. If we can stimulate discussion, we say, wow. And if you come with some resolutions and solutions, we say, wow, share that with us. The topic today is a very interesting topic. And I want to challenge you. Whilst you're watching this program, would you put your cell phone off? Can you? Are you addicted to technology? The question about social media is like a tsunami. It has overtaken us. It is said that it took 40 years for radio to reach 50 million people. It took television 14 years. It took internet four years, iPad three years, and social media only nine months. The question is, do you and I understand the impact of social media? Yes, of course, there are advantages but there are also disadvantages. So our objective today is to look at it and hopefully help you and give you some guidelines. So therefore, I'm very happy to engage uh, my beloved uh, brothers here. I want to start off with you, Hussein. When it comes to social media, what comes to your mind? Assalamu alaikum, Idris. And um, yeah, I think firstly, you hit the nail on it. I like what you said about it being a tsunami. It's really hit us, hasn't it? I mean. There was, you know, for a few weeks or months, I remember Facebook uh, coming my way and you hearing about it. And before you knew it, everybody was on Facebook. And then it was the WhatsApp, it was the BBM, uh, you know, from internet emails a few years ago. I was having a chat with somebody the other day and I said to him, you know, we communicated a few years ago. And I almost said to him, we communicated via email. But then I remembered a few years ago, there wasn't email. We were not communicating via email. So it may have been a tele telephonic discussion I had with him. But that's how fast it's come upon us. It's really been a tsunami. So I like what you said. And therefore, it's given us as a human race, as families, as individuals, very little time to adjust. And also, it's given people very little time to find out what the advantages and the disadvantages particularly are to social media and how it's impacting families, individuals, how it's impacting our psychology and also our health. You know, uh, whilst you're talking, you know, uh, I'm reminded about uh, two books. One is called The Digital Vertigo by Andrew Keane. And he argues that this is eroding humanity, is diminishing us. And then at the same time, someone else, I'm not too sure about the author, when he spoke about social media, he or she, she said the title of the book was Alone Together. So, Abdul, do you think social media whilst we are interacting with people, lots of people, and I know you're a great communicator. You love people, you are energized, and I like that. I love it, right? May Allah bless you uh, for that gregarious nature, right? But the question I'm asking you, uh, do you think through the social media, are you really able to engage with people, or do you feel that, you know, more often than not, we cannot engage with people because we're not allowing ourselves to have the face-to-face -face communication? Andres, you know, coming back, I think firstly the face-to-face -face communication is critical. I think that is the way we should communicate. But currently this new trend, when you talk of the nine months boom, you know, a baby is born in nine months. It takes nine months for a baby to, to be born. But yeah, this nine months has gone so quickly. And now this tsunami that Hussein mentions what you mentioned about has taken this country. It's, the, it's a new way of technology. It's a new way of communication. It's the fastest currently trend in, in the world that's, that's hit our world in the last 15 years, 10 years, 5 years. It's just boomed us with this new technology. And I think you're right. When you say, what, how can I interact with people? I believe that, yes, I'm a, a fan of, of social media. So, and I think there's a positive way you can look at it. You can interact with people through inspiration, to empowering people, to giving them good messages, quotations. And I think if you do it in that way, there's a lot of positives. Inshallah, we'll come to the advantages. You know, uh, I suspect, uh, Abdul, you need help. I think you're, all, I think you're also addicted to social media. <laughs> I know, Mobin, you are involved with many, many projects. And uh, when you think of social media, uh, 
Uh, I mean, what comes to your mind? I think I see myself on the other side of the spectrum because for me, social media is a business because a whole lot of people interacting and we use it for online marketing. I do have a personal account, but I'm not very active on it um, because I think it's a huge distraction. I, I'm in favor of it. I think it's a very good thing to make the world smaller, find my friends I went to school with and all that kind of things. But um, more active in my life is the fact that we market on it and, and it's a, a, a great tool to mobilize people and get people interested in whatever it is you want to uh, put out to them. Okay, you know, I, I mean, from what I've <coughs> gathered, I mean, uh, as you said, Hussein is a, like a tsunami. You spoke like a baby, but to me, it's more like a monster anyway, right? Absolutely. And the point Mobin makes, I think, yes, we can use it for positive uh, purposes. I'm not denying it. We cannot wish away its existence. We cannot say, no, no, stay far from it. I think, you know, people need to be literate about it to understand it. But uh, Hussein, coming back to you, right? Now, if you look at this whole social media thing, the quality, it's a revolution, as it were. And uh, I don't think many of us understand fully its full implications, understand the complexity of it all. And many of us get involved in it, not realizing the impact it has on others and to what extent we're able to engage with them. And uh, any thoughts on this? You, you know, I, I find myself uh, also maybe a victim, but it's so easy to get sucked into it. So I've got to deliberately almost force myself and discipline myself to put the phone away at times because you do become addicted. Without yeah. your phone, you feel lost. You know, in technology, I say, even when the cell phone came out, I mean, there was a time when there was no cell phone and you had to go to a landline and make a call or receive a call and people would leave messages. I mean, you know, Technology can either do one of two things. It can simplify our life, or it can complicate our life. The choice is ours. We still have that choice. So your point is a valid one. How do we manage social network? We can't run away from it. Uh, we can't pretend it's not there. It, it, it is there. How do we manage it within our own personal space, uh, within our family environment, and then uh, within the greater society? How do we manage it? And that's the challenge, really. That, that we're sitting with at the moment. I mean, within the family home, when you walk into a home, um, I've seen families sometimes sitting around a table. It's happened to me, mm. where my daughter, my wife, myself, we'll be sitting on one table, and three of us will be sitting on the phone, as opposed to, as you say, Jack, having a personal conversation face-to-face -face with one another. And that is the challenge. So it is about disciplining ourselves. It's about having certain guidelines and rules within the family. Yourself, how do you discipline yourself? Yeah, the two, the two aspects, right, to Hussein. The one is you as a parent being the more, a role model for them and the whole idea about guidelines, which you're going to discuss in some detail. Abdul, I know you are involved in many schools, uh, you know, uh, motivating young people, giving them hope, people that have given up on life, and, and that's a wonderful thing to do. And sometimes, you know, these same kids come from environments that are completely impoverished in terms of that guidance. But my question to you is, uh, it emanates from my discussion I had with the young girl who was in metric, who is in metric rather, and I asked her, how many hours a day you spend on social media? I got a shock of my life. Here is a decent girl who appeared diligent at school. She said to me, eight hours a day. So then I, I wasn't a, a, a top mathematician, you know, <laughs> but if I get it wrong, you can whisper afterwards, Abdul, no need to correct me here, right? Okay. Anyway, when, so I said to her that by the time you attain, you are 60 years old or 65, given for the first five years she may not have used it, you would have spent 20 years of your life in front of the social media. You know, that's an incredible statistic, what you say about currently, if you look at the schools, 75% of kids have phones. Basically, there's the statistics, in fact, even more than that. From that 75% of the kids, if you look at from 100%, 25% will use it for text and phone calls. That's, that's what they would use for. And what is the other 75%? It's used on social media. You know, statistically also they say that on a normal capacity, children would, um, uh, normal adults like us would use that social network on a, once in a while, we'll look at it, or Facebook or whatever it is. When it comes to kids, they look at it 10 times a day. Now, when you look at that, that statistic, it's alarming and it's scary. And yes, that interaction, that physical contact, that personal touch is lost. And that is critical and, and that is a serious concern um, in, our, in our communities, in our societies, in our schools. And Uncle Idris, you know, you mentioned some time back when I was chatting to you that 
in fact, not only just social media, they've also into those games, children. They're playing games a lot, and, and the, there's so many harmful effects with it, Uncle Idris. Yes, you know, oh, there are many, many issues, you know, and, and we are here uh, not to alarm people, but I think we need to look at the situation as it is and hopefully give them some kind of guidelines. So there we have it, uh, our beloved uh, viewers. We're talking about social media, and I think it's important for us to reflect on our own habits and ask ourselves to what extent are you having that conversation with your kids? At home, for example, there is a social etiquette. To what extent are our kids and ourselves uh, consumed by the social media? And we'll be back just after this break. Time is now. Time is now. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm sure you and the family, we had some discussions regarding uh, social media. But my question uh, to all of you, what drives people? I mean, you see people consumed by it. You see them walking in the road. They're busy with it. And uh, my wife often tells me, Idris, you forget me, but not yourself. For me. <laughs> <laughs> and my mother-in-law is there to acknowledge that, you know. So the, it, it's become part of us. It's like an, you know, a, a, like an addendum. It's there part of us. We we do not leave home without it. I mean, what is it that drives people, Hussein? I think it's just what we must never forget is, you know, when we spoke, uh, we talk about health issues and a lot of other things. We, a lot of it emanates and starts from the corporates. The big corporates, it's in their interest to develop things like social media and allow it to grow because people make a lot of money out of these things. So let's not forget that as a starting point, that there are a lot of people making a lot of money out of it. So there's always a financial and commercial element to it. So when we get sucked into these things, it's important to understand where it's coming from to start with. What drives individuals to tweet a picture of themselves or take a picture and put it on Instagram and all that? That becomes, uh, it's probably got a lot to do with the ego, with people wanting to be out there. There's an element of pride to it. Uh, and, and people want to be popular, don't they? And then, you know, if we go back in history and look over the years, people like Hitler were extremely popular. So today people judge themselves of and who they are, uh, content of the character, they think that if I have a thousand followers or if I tweet something and I get a whole lot of retweets, I'm, I'm very popular. And yes, maybe they are. But remember, Hitler had a lot of followers. No. You know, there were many prophets out there throughout the years. As an Isa alayhi salam and many other prophets, even Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam at times had no followers or very few followers. Did it mean they were wrong or right or the other way around? So that's not always a judge of who you are and what you are. It's the point that you're making. It's a very important point. I know many people are diminished whether they have li more likes than the other. In other words, you can have likes, but the question is, are you likable? Is God Almighty pleased with you? Correct. And that's fundamental. I think sometimes when we are consumed by the media, we forget what our purpose is. Sorry, uh, Abdul, you are coming. You were saying I want to talk on, on the likes. A lot of people look at the likes, and yes, it can play a positive and a professional impact in your life. But if I look at what you talked about, Prophet Isa alayhi salam, and if you look at how he interacted with people, he connected with the lepers. He connected with the blind people and touched them on their, on their faces. He connected and made contact, eye contact with people and had that physical touch, the real element. And that is what is lacking. That is what is missing. And, and, and if we look just back at how the prophets had interacted with people, we've lost sight of that. We've now come into this new, new technology, new world, and we're forgetting our roots. We're forgetting all of that, Uncle Idris. In fact, I mean, uh, those individuals that are critical of social media, they say precisely the point that you make, we become emotionally invisible. Mm. And when you become emotionally invisible, your interaction with other person is not an authentic uh, interaction. You know, Uncle, as you talk of interaction with people, a perfect example I want to give and look at Mufti Mank. He's a young, dynamic person who's, a, who's involved in social media and he interacts. His, most of his followers are youth, but he sends inspirational messages, positive messages. But that boils down to, to, to the way you use it. So as with anything, I think it's good and bad to it. But, but what is, I think, put social media under fire because what I can sense in, in the room is that everybody's talking against it. But what's putting it under fire is the fact that people are using it incorrectly. But if you use it correctly and you have, I mean, there's a whole lot of quotes you can get, there's videos you can get, there's a ton of things 
that's uplifting and inspiring. And if you use it for those purposes, then yes, it's good. If you use it to understand what's happening in the world, you can get the news on demand, you can get whatever you want on demand. So I don't think it's all bad to it. It just boils down to as with anything. I'll give you the tool. It's up to you what you do with it. So there is a lot of very, very good things that can come Absolutely. out of it. Look, I, I think I would agree with Mobin. Uh, if we've created the impression that we're completely against it, I think that uh, yeah. maybe we didn't yeah. come across quite correctly because I think what we are is highlighting the pitfalls and where, because as you say, it's just been nine months for 50 million users yes. to be able to, to, to get onto uh, social ne uh, media. It's come onto us so quickly that we haven't had time really to make the adjustments in our family life, in our individual life. But I agree with you, Mubin. I think there's a lot of advantages. I mean, for example, the, little, the family groups that are starting to mm -hmm. develop. So many people now are getting to know family they haven't met before. Uh, they've been out of touch with who are living overseas in Australia and uh, the UK, whatever. And suddenly they're communicating with one another on a daily basis. So there are a lot of advantages. On YouTube the other day, I pulled something out uh, for my daughter who's living a time, uh, learning a timetable. So it was a little like, almost like a musical song that taught her to learn a timetable within a few days. So it's amazing what you can pull out of social network, the internet, media, the WhatsApp. There's huge advantages as well. But it is about managing. I think it's important to highlight those, um, those, those pitfalls. You know what I'm saying? On that, you know, just on managing... You know, when, why do I use social network for, for sometimes? I'm, I'm, I enjoy sport. So sometimes I can just look and get an update immediately on sports. Sometimes I'm on traffic and I go onto Twitter and I get accident reports. So there's a lot of positives which you can get interaction with what's happening around you prior and, and, and get that information, which is definitely useful. Because if you want to get ahead in the world, and, and if the world is changing at such a rapid pace where you have social media and the advent of the technology to um, internet and all these uh, great things, if you're not using them effectively, you surely will fall behind because there are people that are. I just give you a quick idea. I use a thing called Get Abstract. And I used to read books and enjoy reading a thick book. But Get Abstract will summarize, I think, five or ten pages, a couple of pages, wow. and gives you the gist of the book. So I could go through a ton of books, and I'll give you the insight into all those books just because I use Get Abstract. Just when I thought you were an avid reader, <laughs> yeah, you are an avid reader of abstracts. You know? <laughs> you know, well, I, I've come across it off late, and, and I've realized that if, if, if I don't use it, in, in my field, somebody else will be using it, and it would just put me that much more behind. So I need to stay ahead of my game. Sorry, uh, yeah, and, uh, so, yeah. you, know, uh, you know what, sorry, I'm going to just come in here for one reason, right? The, and I feel it's important for me to ask this question, to share this. What you're saying is right. I mean, I think all of us agree there are many positive things uh, about social media. And those who use it judiciously and with circumspection, they are enriched by it. But it has consumed us. There are two things I want to speak about very, very quickly, right? This whole issue of a digital footprint is some things that not many people understand. A digital footprint. There is this erroneous notion that if I delete something, it's going to be erased. But it's not erased. Hussein, you want to just speak about it that? It is erased, Uncle Idris. Yeah. What do you mean by that it's not erased? I yeah. think if I erase something on, tele uh, on, on, on Facebook or something like that, I believe it's erased. It's the figment of your imagination, Abdul. Nothing ever gets deleted Nothing. on Facebook. I mean, uh, the, uh, Facebook, if you, if you read the terms and conditions, is liable to give any authority your information, whether it was old uh, and, and an account created at the inception of Facebook or today. So no photo gets deleted. Although your account would be deleted, put the email address back in and go in. The account is still there. It just reactivates itself. And, well. and also, I think legally, a court of law um, could ask whether it's Google, Facebook, Twitter, whoever, to pull off information. Even so, so even if it's deleted from your account and you don't have access to it, it's still on the server. It's there. It can never ever be de deleted. So they, there are ways of retrieving that. So I think important, the digital footprint, if you tweet something, uh, when you happen to be in a particular mood, you wake up on a bad day and you've had a fight with somebody, maybe your wife, and you tweet something and you go like, whatever it, it is. And, that, and then tomorrow you realize I made a mistake out of emotion or anger. I, I tweeted something and the whole world has access to it now. Let me delete it. You delete it and you think it's gone. It's not gone. It's so there, I think that, that's very important uh, for viewers to understand that. Because many of us believe erroneously, I'll post something, I'll delete it. And I think one has to be very, very guarded because I find 
lots of people uh, use the social media for more self-glorification. You know, as one writer said that many girls are living in a cyber bubble. It's about the image and how they're perceived by others. They're, they are more concerned, really, about the virtual friends than the real friends. They're more concerned about how they're perceived. And these are uh, uh, real concerns, yep. especially for a young person growing you know, up in today's society. An another way is reflection. What we must do is before we send any statements, any comments, reflect, look back before you post it. Make sure that that's what you want to say. So when we reflect on what we're saying, it actually make, uh, assures us what we are saying. The other thing that I found out of, you know, and just, just from experience also, sometimes on whether it's a WhatsApp or even an email, that very often people will choose now to have a conversation with somebody rather via email or WhatsApp as opposed to having a telephonic conversation. And the best way is the face-to-face, -face, as you spoke about. But on WhatsApp uh, or on email, the tone is not picked up. So you may say something with a particular intention and the person on the other end reads it in a different way because there's no tone there. They can't see your facial expressions. They can't see you smile or... Whatever, and, and they tend to think that you mean it in a different way. So very often you, people are misunderstood. And while it's very good for communication, and these are all communication tools, there are also ways you can have breakdown in communication because of these tools. In fact, uh, you know, just a, a few points at this stage that you know, many of us may not be aware. There are also psychological disorders that are associated with when you're overly consumed by social media. And in fact, I know because I deal with issues in marriage, social media is regarded as the biggest single cause of marital discord. It promotes infidelity. You have a sense of bravado speaking to another individual. You know, you might say to the sister Juma Bubarak, she said Juma Bubarak to you. And then, <laughs> and, and next week you send Juma Bubarak with some kisses <laughs> and she responds the same way. Because you have a sense of bravado and, and this has impacted on so many of our marriages, right? We don't have the time to look at the many, many, many psychological disorders. In fact, it also erodes your self-esteem. There are other issues in terms of people uh, contributing to a person being bipolar and a whole range of things, right? And I think this is something that parents need to be aware of and individuals. I know, Abdul, you understand. You know, uh, if you look at it in the way you're saying it, you know, people say it's texting. I call it sexting. Mm. Am I right, Uncle Idris? Uh, you know, and, and I think that is, that is dangerous. You know, we put our emotion in laughter, in, in a smile. We put smileys. All for what reason? When we can interact, people want that physical touch, that care, that eye contact. That's what we want, Uncle so Idris. There we have it, uh, our beloved brothers and sisters. There are many, many advantages and also many uh, disadvantages. And really, we want to help you, to guide you, and to give you meaningful guidelines. If are not suggesting that the guidelines we're going to offer can be imposed in your home. But I think it will engender discussion and stimulate conversation. Because in the end, Allah forbid, when your kid says, I could not get to know my father because he was too consumed by the social media. We'll be back immediately after this break. Time is now. Time is now. Assalamu alaikum <clears throat> wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, indeed, uh, even in the break, <laughs> I have a lot of discussion, and it's quite clear that there are diverse uh, viewpoints. And we are not here to impose a particular perspective. We're not saying to you that it's bad or only good. We want you to have a balanced uh, perspective. And uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to show you an inset we have, uh, and I have no doubt that the inset would inspire you perhaps and make you reflect on what has been said. And when we come back, we will talk about it. Time is now. Look, we speak about evolution in the world. Social media, nobody expected social media when it came out and, and how to use social media. As we stand today, social media continues to grow. There continues to be new ways of how we consume social media. Um, social media has positive and negatives. I think uh, from a positive perspective, um, getting messaging out there is one way of, of utilizing social media. But then we've also set ourselves up for, for, for the negatives where, where people try and, and lure people or try and put 
you know, pornography or hate speech because social media is just that platform where it's ungovernable and you can almost say what you want with, without having any consequences. And there are countries who are, who are, who are passing stringent social media laws, but um, in South Africa particularly, we're not there yet. But, um, you know, th th there are ways of, of, of utilizing it so that, 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 that the positive messages can be sent out. We do realize that it's a, it's a big focal point amongst the youth of today. So how do we, how do we use social media to, to, to get messages across to the youth? And, and that's what we, we need to look at. And there are many ways of doing that. And I think um, if we embrace social media, and, and realize the, 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 the positives of social media. I, for one, believe that there are more positives than negatives around the utilization of social media. So it's, it's just about getting that balance right on, on, on what type of content, what type of messaging you want to get across. And, and um, you know, there's no right way or wrong way, in my opinion, but there's effective ways in, 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 in utilizing social media. you got to understand who your target market is. So, I mean, if we're talking a sports organization, what messaging do we want to get at? Is it live scoring? Is it, is it team news? Is it competitions? And that's all positive messaging from a, from a sports organization. If you're a business organization or, 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 or a shop or a company, what are you advertising on social media? What are you, how do you advertise? What do you put out there? How do you communicate with your, with your consumer? Because social media is also a way of, of, of communicating. Not everybody has the opportunity to spend 20 minutes on a call center. So if I tag uh, someone in and say, listen, I've had an issue with, with something, um, you know, responses are, chances are that you're going to get the response. Good companies always have a policy in place of responding within a certain amount of time from getting a, a, a message. If we're talking youth organizations, Islamic organization, mosques, madrasas, I mean, we know the youth are, 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 are consuming social media. That's a perfect avenue to create your profile and start putting out those messages of inspiration. Start putting out those, those hadiths. Start putting out those, those key learnings from the Prophet or, 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 or what we want to see, what we believe is a model, a, a, a model youngster and let them understand what makes a good youngster. I don't think it's about parents interacting with, 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 with kids through social media. I think parent-child relationship need to still happen as per normal. Um, I think parents need to know what's on social media. Parents need to know what the kids are looking at at social media. And parents need to know that the children are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, you name it, right? Uh, mix it. So once they know that, they at least they can also then, you know, visit those sites and see what's on there. But it's not about social media should not be a parent-child um, a parent -child relationship. That should still be a, you know, I hug you, I, I speak to you over the table or, or, or you know, physical contact and and for me uh, we must never think that social media replaces parenthood that that's not that's not it i mean yes parents can like kids can like this stuff but they must be aware of what content is on there Time is now. yes uh, that was altaf uh, kazi good to see him <laughs> alhamdulillah and uh, what do you think of what he said there was Sorry, I see you first asking, <laughs> <laughs> and all my naughty students are on my right, you know. Idris, I, I, I would agree. I think there's a lot of positives, there are a lot of ways we can use social media that are beneficial uh, to the ways we're communicating with kids. A lot of parents, you know, we spoke about face-to-face -face earlier, but face-to-face, -face, a lot of parents can't communicate. I've known people who are very quiet, who are very, uh, uh, you know, within themselves and... and, and introverted when uh, when when face to face or in a, in a physical group but on whether it's whatsapp or an email they tend to express themselves a bit like create creative artists you know uh, they're not out there they're not extrovert but you give them a pen and a paper or whatever and suddenly they start expressing themselves so that's a way to probably get people yeah, but we'll say out a of point. themselves as well but that's a point you see i mean i see it as a facilitator i do not see it as replacing face to face if this enhances, if this connects, if this brings us closer, we should do that. If we are going to use it exclusively, sometimes, of course, you know, in terms of security, you can inform people, watch out, don't go there, and so on and so forth. There's another matter. Are you suggesting that because some parents have a particular persona, they may be more comfortable with social media so that we, for example, do not interact with them on a face-to-face. -face. I would agree with you. I think it shouldn't replace the physical interaction, but there are certain people who may feel more comfortable having a conversation with their kids, maybe via WhatsApp or via email. And then they can use that as a tool and a vehicle to actually get something or a point across 
that they may not be able to get across physically. And I suppose that's a different argument and a different discussion for another day. But another point I probably want to, uh, I, I would like to raise is a time management issue. So if we have 24 hours in the day, uh, and I think you alluded to it earlier, how much time are we spending on our phones, on our computers, on our laptops, on our iPads? And how much time are we spending? So, for example, when I wake up in the morning, what's the first thing I do? Is it pick up the phone? Is it to check whether I had any likes on my uh, WhatsApp or, or, or any likes, sorry, on my uh, Twitter and, and Instagram? Or is it then to tweet something out the moment I wake up, whatever the case is, um, and then to keep continue throughout the day? I mean, there are kids now who, in our days, uh, Abdul, we used to go out and play cricket in the streets. We used to be physically active. So coming, talking from a health perspective, are kids actually moving? Uh, you know, are they being active? Are they involved in tennis, cricket, soccer, whatever? Swimming. There's all those opportunities available today that we didn't have 20 or 30 years ago. And yet today the tennis courts are sitting empty. The swimming pools are empty. They're not being used. If I ask people who have swimming pools, how many times do the kid actually go outside and swim? Mm. Very little, maybe four, five, ten. I mean, if I have to count the number of days my kids swim in my swimming pool, I probably I might as well close it down. Mm. But they spend a lot of time on social network. On the, on the computer, on the laptop, mm. on the iPad. The point and well that made. is a concern, so it needs to be no, managed. Hussain, the point has been well made. Because the two points, and Abdullah, I would like you to come in, right? The two points. Uh, today, when you ask a kid, where did you come from? I mean, that's a deep question. Before, where you came from? I went to my friend's place. It's a very deep question because your mind, I mean, the social media can take you throughout the world. You have access to it. So that's a frightening thought. Mm. The second thing, it's, it's a personal story. Uh, as a growing young man, you know, <laughs> I know, you're looking at my gray hair, Abdul. And uh, when my dad said to us, go and play outside, we got so excited when he spoke about the sports. Today, you, you tell that to a kid, you can you okay, dad? <laughs> yeah. like, play with what, you know? You're right. You know, Uncle Idris, uh, Idris what I want to say is that uh, children, where do they spend most of their time? First, when television came, they spent all their time on television and we used to complain about watching cartoon networks and all that. Today, they sit in their room. They're idle. They're sitting on the phone, connecting with people. You know, I was speaking to a friend who we, I'm involved with coaching and there was this one instant where a 17-year-old girl had actually connected in a room with someone and she kept connecting with this person and this person actually lured her to Cape Town and he was a young boy also saying he was 17 years and she was excited. She saw pictures of this person and then she, she went to Durban she met this boy and this boy says, you're going to meet the right person is in this house. And she went into this house and when she got into this house, she was raped. And it's a tragic story where many people, it was, it was circulated virally. And uh, it's, that's what's happening. It's scary what is out there that if you interact with the wrong person. And uh, that's critical, Uncle Chris. So we have to be careful of who we interact with, who we chat with, and our parents. Us as parents, we need to check with our children. Yeah, but that's a point that, that Altaf was making that it can be used for positive purposes, right? Absolutely. And if you use for wrong purposes, you do so at your own peril. The world is changing, and I think, at a ever so rapid pace. And Joburg Town is, is not the safest place, but I don't think you must stop driving through Joburg Town. Just be safe. Lock your doors. Do what you need to do, but go there if you need to. So similarly, if you need to use social media, use it. You need to be responsible. I don't think social media is the problem. It's the people that use it that are the issue. If you use it safely, and you don't be picking up people and be meeting them all over the world, chances are you're probably not going to have a problem. You need to know what you're using it for and what do you seek out of it. If you're looking for significance or to get 50 likes or whatever, then you need to go find significance elsewhere so that you don't have to wait for people to just like your pictures because it's empty. It's, it's baseless. There's nothing to it. There's no substance to it. Us as parents, we need to be more aware of our children. And that's critical. I think aware, but not hard to, well, not hard to the point where I know a lot of parents take the phone away. No. All that happens, the kid gets another phone. It's, it's a matter of working with that child and not having an expectation on them that this is how you should be because in my days, I never used social media. The world has changed in the last 50 years more than it's ever changed. And it's set to change in the next 50 years more than it's ever changed in its history. How are you going to embrace the change? You need to do something to move with the change and, and, and not have this uh, little bubble that you live in that makes you feel like, no, we, my kids wouldn't do this, or, the, or this is how we were brought up, and that's how they'll be brought It doesn't work that way. Okay, that's the point, I think, and I want to end this conversation here, right? Because what he's saying is also very true, that our situation is very, very dynamic. 
what it requires, I think, for parents, which we shall share in the next uh, segment, basically is to inspire, uh, to connect with the children, to understand their world. Because we, as the elders, because you call me Uncle Idris, uh, you do it with a glee, uh, we are regarded as a digital immigrants, but kids digital natives. It's, for them, it's like putty in their hands. Yes. They can play with it, right? But something we need to understand. So there we have it, our beloved brothers and sisters. In the next segment, we're going to share with you uh, practical uh, guidelines. And remember, as psychologists have said, if you do not change within 48 hours, it's unlikely you're going to change. Time is now. Time is now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back uh, to Inspirate. And as we say, the time is now. And hopefully you will engage us. And please, our information is there at the bottom of the screen. Share with us your ideas your perspectives, and your critique. And now we are here in the last segment. It's easy to talk about disadvantages and advantages, but the person sitting at home with the mortar is saying, you know what, I've heard the story before, man. You know, I, I got a monster at home, right? Now, how do I deal with it? What practical guidelines you can give parents? And it's important. They need it. They want answers. They are our brothers and sisters. They are pining. They are disconnected with their children. Now, what answers? Uh, Abdul, can you give me two responses? You know, Idris, I think uh, digital network is here to stay. It is here that we have to, in, we have to embrace it. And it's, it's going to be here for some time to come. And, and it's going to grow even further. We as parents, there's a few things we can do. There's a lot of things we can do. One of the things I think we should do is when our children post pictures, on, on the social media, we need to monitor those pictures. We need to check what those pictures are like. And if we're unhappy with them, we need to interact with them. Build okay, the confidence with right. them. So the first one, this, I want to repeat this. I think it's important, Very right? Important. Uh, parents should check the photographs, the pictures their kids post online. Okay, that's one point. Another thing they could do is maybe put a computer in a central point in the central lounge where it's easy, accessible, and check the, privacy, uh, the private settings and things like that, so they're aware of that also. Yes, yeah, so the central location, right? Hussein? It is, I have one rule, uh, you know, we've developed as a family in, in, in our home, is that meal times, or when, we, when we're sitting down having our dinner, um, all phones get put away. And even if the phone rings, we don't answer because that's our time as a family. And I think it's worked very well. Now, you could take it a step further. So, for example, you could, uh, in order to manage your time and the amount of time that kids would spend, and depending on the age, I think as kids get older, they may get uh, to 17, 18, 19, you may want to give them a little more leeway. But the younger kids, you certainly want to make sure you manage it. Um, and and when, when, you know, some parents say that even when you walk in the house, take the phones, put them one side, and if you need to use it, you use it. But apart from that, you can't have the entire family sitting on the phone. So that may be another rule you want to allocate a certain amount of time. If you've got a Wi-Fi zone and if, if, if uh, you do have Wi-Fi in the home, you maybe want to you know, limit that also to certain hours as opposed to leaving it open because you know, if, the, if it's open all the time, the temptation is to just get on there and start watching videos and YouTube clips, etc., etc. So it's about managing your time um, as far as that goes. So maybe that would be one way to do it. But for me, the, the really important thing is where I have a challenge is, is getting kids to be physically active. And so I would rather prefer them playing outside in the yard, hitting a tennis ball, than sitting and playing a, a, this, the very same tennis game on, uh, you know, as a, as a game on, on, on telly or maybe on the laptop. So I would physically want to encourage them. So the games, I try and discourage them from playing and rather get them to, 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 to play uh, the, the physical game as such. Mobile. Well, you know, in, in business, they call it building great company culture. So I'm not one who believes in, in policing anybody because if you're going to micromanage your children, I mean, I'm, I'm young myself, so if you're going to micromanage your children and uh, police them, I don't think it's going to work. The culture you'd want to create is teach them how to channel that energy of what they're putting into social media into something that's meaningful in that social media, whether it educates them or it gives them better skills or tools or teaches them to connect with the right people, be it family, but use that platform let them still use the platform because you can't take it away. But channel the correct energy into the platform. And I think if they buy in or you sell them that 
value and if they buy into that value, then you've got somebody that's very interested in what you've showed them, they appreciate what you've taught them and they use it effectively and it's beneficial to all. Okay, Mobin, the, the point that you make, it's about engendering trust, which is a very critical mm, thing. I mean, one of the points, I mean, I often do these presentations, how critical is it for the husband and wife, the mother and the father to have a commonality of vision when it comes to these things? Do you think it's important that they themselves understand how social media works, Hussein? I think it's, it's like with anything else in the family environment, is it, where, where husband and wife need to come and find some common ground. So when you sit down with the kids in that family environment, you're basically sending one message. Because if you, if you have different messages and the husband and wife have a different view on things, then of course you're going to confuse the kids even more. I, I do, uh, just to take up on, on Mubin's point, I think Mubin, uh, maybe when his kids get a little older, I, I think, uh, I think I'd, li I'd like to, I'd yeah, like yeah. to maybe then have this discussion with him yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. I, but I think yeah. when he has those challenge, uh, no, challenges, in fact, I would say, <laughs> challenge he, he, he's going to bust his cyber bubble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I do agree with him. I, I think, yes, it's important to manage and channel it in the right way. Like anything else, you know, kids have a lot of energy. Uh, you, you can either, you know, they can either channel that energy in the wrong direction or the right direction. I said earlier that, you know, technology can simplify our life or complicate our life. And I ask myself that question whenever I pick up the phone, whenever I get onto the uh, computer. That's the question I ask myself. Am I simplifying my life or am I complicating it? My decision to not get onto Facebook, and I'm not on Facebook, is based on that. That I think if I do get on Facebook, I'm going to complicate my life. So I'm, I'm off it. I haven't touched it. Yes, I'm on Twitter, I'm on this and that, because I think that may make things a little... And, and even there, there's certain things I'm, I'm starting to, beginning to ask myself, maybe I should just get off and, and not involve my, because it, it's starting to suck up my time. So for me, the time element is important, the health element is very important, and of course, the psychological element, it is, you mentioned, that is it impacting the child's psychology, his confidence? Uh, are, people, are kids getting depressed? And you'll pick them up very quickly as a parent. Mm -hmm. And you see kids starting to get sucked into that and spending more time than they really should on the computer, uh, then it's time to maybe start putting some rules in place. You know, Abdul, I, I'm sorry. We, sorry, I want to ask you a question first, right? Abdul, the, uh, some people say that, you know, you should have access to all your kids' passwords. And do you think, I know <laughs> <laughs> Mobin will rebel against it, right? But on your part, do you think it's uh, something important? Do you think it's fair? I think, I think it's important because you need to monitor your kids, as I mentioned earlier. You need to be aware of, of what they're posting online. And if sometimes they're posting things that are unethical, that are, that are, that are causing distraction and, and, and disturbance out there, you need to be aware of that and chat to them. I think that what you talk about is confidence. That confidence we need to build in them. That trust we need to build in them. And how do we do this trust? How do we do this build? I think to me, and that's what I see is interact with them. Have eye contact with them. Chat to them. You know what? Even wrap your hands around them and send, give them a proper hug rather than hugging them and sending hugs on, hugs on Facebook and Twitter. I think that is the way, that personal touch, that real human touch is what we need to give our children. Abdul, the, okay, uh, I went to a school in, a few weeks ago and I asked the kids, when last did you hug your father? Hmm. And one kid said to me on Eid Day, when I conduct workshops, the first question I ask couples, did you hug your wife this morning before you came? Some of them very excited about it and they raised their hands <laughs> and many they, they did not raise their hands. I think it's also very important that we demonstrate that affection and that love, you know. I agree with you, Idris, that interaction, that real life contact, that loving touch, that touch just, hey, I care, I'm here, is more important than sending that text message. I think that to me is the ultimate of how we can take social media to the next level, use it in a positive way, but also interact with people. Okay, there are people that are watching this program and many of them may be nodding their heads. They said, yes, you know, and the husband is telling his wife, you know, uh, BB, you heard the man, right? And she says, what about you, right? So what do they do? Because remember, in Islam, it's about gradualism. I'm sure many people want to effect some changes. They recognize, as al Ghazi mentioned, as Mobin is also a proponent, uh, focusing on the positive aspects. But they also realize the point you made, Hussein, that there's an issue of discipline, the issue of time, and how we can impact on the kids psychologically, right? Now, what should they do? 
immediately after this program, we are giving them some ideas, right? Some ideas only, right? For example, the ideas we shared in some homes, I know the moment they come in, the phones are kept in a particular place, right? It's off. They hug each other, as I know, uh, Abdul, you like to I hug. Hugging is You're a hugger, though. right? Personal touch. <laughs> Personal touch. I'm getting competition here, <laughs> right? right? The other idea we spoke about the passwords, so and cool. Mobin spoke about building trust. Uh, Hussein spoke about time and, and discipline, a number of things need to take place, right? Now, what advice would you give the parent? Well, I mean, he's, he's watched the program. He wants to introduce some changes. He doesn't want to just take the phone away, wrench it from the kids. So what should you and be I doing? I always believe that the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. Everything we do, we must do it gradually, in moderation, in a balanced way. So we must start slowly, a small, small step we can take today is start interacting with our children, becoming aware, and that is a starting point. Okay, the interaction, I know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the couple, because you may not know this, one of the four reasons for divorces in the community is when the husband and wife, the father and mother, do not have a uniform policy regarding the children. Whilst one sometimes is too strict, the mm. other is too liberal, and both have ramifications, right? So. I mean, do you not think that perhaps the first thing they should do is to acknowledge that there are negative aspects to it? Absolutely. Right? And they need to say, okay, fine, how do we take it forward to our children? I think sometimes it is it's not a bad thing for parents to disagree also. Uh, sometimes you can do it very deliberately with kids. And, you know, kids, sometimes you need to use a little bit of psychology with them and play the good cop, bad cop. It's not always, you know, sometimes if, if one parent is reprimanding a, a a kid, it doesn't mean that the other also needs to agree with it and come and also reprimand. The other parent maybe needs to be a bit of a shoulder to, 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 to lean on. Uh, but, but to answer your earlier question, I think the first step parents can take and with immediate effect is to have a family meeting. I think we don't have enough of those things. Have a family meeting, sit down and say to the kids, look here, you've got a laptop, you've got an iPad, you've got a cell phone, etc. We need to put certain rules in place. We're going to put this on the fridge but we want the rules to come from you. So let us discuss as a family, what are those rules? We're going to put, we've got maybe 20 rules. Let's cut it down to 10. 10 rules, how do we manage technology and manage this environment, but in a very reasonable way? And let it come from them. And I think it comes from the kids themselves. And then you agree to it as a family. You've got a better chance of getting buy-in from them That's and making point. it work. Yeah. There we have it, uh, our beloved brothers and sisters. I think there are many practical things uh, that we can do because, after all, we do not want to alienate ourselves from our children. We want to have a, a cohesive unit, a, a unit in which there are cell phones, there are social media, but it is positive. You've got to believe in your children. You've got to believe in them. And, of course, there must be consequences if your children betray you. This is Idris Kamisa saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And remember, tell your friends about us, ironically, through social media. Inspirate. <laughs>